Hey there, Cousin here, and welcome back to Always Doing. The end of the month means it's time for my most anticipated reads for next month, and while many months it's extremely varied as far as genre goes, this month it's almost entirely nonfiction, so if you're a nonfiction fan, today is for you. As always, remember that these are US publishing dates and they're subject to change, and let's get right into it. The first book I'm not going to talk too much about, but it's You Ad Mirola by Alexis Staria. This is a contemporary romance that I adored. It comes out August 4th from Avon Books. They were kind enough to give me an advanced copy, and I have so many things to say that they're all going to be in a release day review. Completely separate video, so look forward to that on the 4th. On August 3rd from Oxford University Press, we have Let's Talk by David Crystal, and this book examines the rules that we follow in conversation but never ever think about. And this resonates with me for a bunch of reasons. Number one, I'm an interpreter, and the art of conversation is something that I deal with whenever I'm working, but also because these unseen rules, it sounds really nebulous, but if you've moved, or even from one part of the United States to the other, you may have bumped up against these, and that's my experience, because I'm from the Northeast, and I'm from a family that talks fast, and we talk over each other, and you can talk and listen at the same time. It can be a done thing. But when I moved to San Francisco, I would be kind of... My interjections would appear in the middle of somebody else's sentence, and they didn't understand that I wasn't interrupting them. I was agreeing with them. I was going, yeah, or whatever, but they just shut up. And right in the middle of their sentence, and, whoop, and I was like, oh wow, I can't talk my normal way here. In addition to talking about these rules, Crystal talks about how to bend and break them, which also has me interested. And it sounds kind of like, was it Deborah Tan Barbara, T no, Deborah Tannen, uh, who wrote some, I think, more sociological books in the 1990s. I think one of them was You Just Don't Understand Men and Women in Conversation. And I'm sure looking back, there would be some things in there that would be cringy, the, the binary part of it, number one, but other things. But I still took away some insights from that that I use today about different people's speaking styles, or styles regardless of gender. So uh, I'm hoping that this will similarly, and hopefully in a kind of updated way, inform my thinking about talking. This next book is nonfiction in translation, which there needs to be more of. I love it so much, and it's rare. But it's Ellis Island, A People's History by Malgorzata Scheinert, and it is translated by Sean Gasper Vai from Polish, and it comes out August 4th from Scribe. It's a history of Ellis Island told by the people who were there, the immigrants, of course, from all different nationalities and ethnicities, but also the people who worked there. It's based on memoirs and unpublished testimonies and apparently like interviews maybe and all different kinds of stuff, and I'm interested because, well, for many reasons, like I'm, the history of immigration and just immigration in general is a topic of interest right now, and my grandmother actually came through Ellis Island as a baby, so I have a personal connection. And when I've studied it up to this point, it's been from the policy side. Um, so I, I want to hear more from the people who went through as well as the people who work there and just everything. It sounds interesting. Next is a memoir and essays, A Mind Spread Out on the Ground by Alicia Elliott. It comes out August 4th from Melville House. Elliott is a Haudenosaunee writer, more specifically from Tuscarora Nation, and the title of the book is a rough translation of the Mohawk phrase for depression. She's using it to describe the traumas Native people have experienced, whether they be cultural or colonial or intergenerational, and apparently this is a very wide-ranging group of essays with everything from parenthood to mental illness to sexual assault to all different kinds of things. So it sounds like it's loaded with trigger warnings, but this came out in Canada actually a couple years ago and it got rave reviews. If you go on Goodreads, people have amazing things to say about it and I, yeah, it sounds great. Last is What Can a Body Do? How We Meet the Built World by Sarah Hendren, and it comes out August 18th from Riverhead. The built environment assumes a lot of things about us. It assumes our basic size and what we can do, and when there's something we can't do, the built world adapts. For example, if you just had a hole in your house going from the first floor to the second, like maybe if we could scale walls like Spider-Man, that wouldn't be an issue, but guess what? We can't, so we build stairs. Thing is, though, is that there are people who, for whatever reason, are not able to do the things that the built environment assumes they can do, and they are called disabled. 
and suddenly it becomes their problem. It's not the problem that the world isn't built for them. It's that this makes no sense. So the author is actually an engineering professor and she is the way that the jacket copy says she's on the cutting edge of disability theory. But uh, she's talking about how to build a city that is adaptable for everybody. What does that look like? What do you have to do? And I'm intensely interested in this because as many of you probably know, I was an urban planning major in university, and last month I introduced a book, uh, Feminist City, that I am also interested in because that looks at how to, the city needs to be built for women to also be just as welcome as men. So I think reading these two books back to back would be amazing. So there we have it, five books that I'm looking forward to in August. Are you interested in any of these books? Have I missed anything that you think I should know about? Just wanna say hi, that's all wonderful. Leave a comment or an emoji down below. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.